Hello and welcome to this, a new spring series of webinars, or if you're in the Southern Hemisphere, it's a new autumn series of webinars. We're here in our usual uh, UK studio. My name's Carl Christmas and I'm here with... Andy Cooper. Yeah, good morning, good afternoon and good evening. And welcome to all of you, wherever you may be. I know we've got viewers watching on Facebook from Indonesia and India mm. and probably many other places. So welcome to you all. Also in the studio, we have Tim and Ascot running all of the, um, the complicated uh, video editing and lighting stuff that's going on in the studio. And we thank them for helping us today. The topic for today is networking, Andy. One of my favorites. Yeah. Let's be lied. Networked audio systems made easy just for you, Carl. Thank you. Yeah. I, yeah, I had you in mind all the time while I'm working on, <laughs> on the content for this. Uh, so webinar. <laughs> as, this, as we go through this webinar, for those of you who are watching on Zoom, um, feel free to uh, type any questions you may have in the Q&A section rather than the chat. Unfortunately, we can't manage uh, at the same time any questions or comments you put on Facebook. Um, but uh, if you are in Zoom, feel free to ask any questions you want on networking, preferably, not on why is Andy's hair so long. Um, yeah. And then Maybe if we get a chance during the webinar, we'll answer them as we go along or we'll answer them en masse altogether at the end. Right. So networking. My first experience mm -hmm. of networking goes back to when I was a young man training people on an M7CL using an Ethersound stage box. That's where it all started for me. Yeah. And it's yeah. never got any less confusing since, <laughs> it has to be said. Yeah. Oh, well, I had a go with Cobernet back in like 2001 or two. You're I remember brave. working on, on, on Cobernet systems. Yeah. And then, of course, Dante since uh, 2010. Uh, yeah. And we're using Dante in, well, pretty much every day now, yep. aren't we, on, in every, every system we make. So I suppose we should start off by thinking about why we use networks so significantly today. Indeed, yeah, yeah. Why, why bother with networking? <laughs> well, it, we use IT technology to, to make our audio systems better, basically. Um, simpler cabling and infrastructure. Cheaper cabling. And, and cheaper too, and much quicker to design and install. So just a few cables can carry all of the data, all of the audio and the control data. Um, and hopefully yeah. the cables are far more neatly installed if you're using them than the ones that Andy did at the back of these consoles here. There's a reason yes. why there's no camera pointing <laughs> at the back of us. You, you, up you should be ashamed of yourself. <laughs> but um, yeah, so simpler cabling, bigger scale, larger capacity and um, centralized control and management. Yeah, indeed. And, and we'll have a look at the benefits of that a little bit later, where with one computer, you can keep an eye on your whole network, no matter how big or small it is. And you can even keep an eye on it from another building or another town or city or country even. And you'll be going into a lot of that later on in this webinar. I won't be traveling to different countries in this webinar, but we'll, we'll give you an idea of how, how you can centrally manage your network. Unfortunately, yes. we won't be traveling to other countries yet, Not hopefully yet. soon. Um, on that subject, let us just touch on the scale and variety of different networks you can have. So obviously here we've got a mid-sized mid-size kind of uh, system with a couple of consoles and mm. but they, they can come in all shapes and sizes different networks indeed i mean particularly with with dante which is obviously what we're going to focus on today using dante because you can get over three thousand different kinds of products using dante from over 300 different manufacturers so uh even from yamaha's own portfolio it ranges from anything from a little tabletop uh, gooseneck microphone through uh huge great mixing consoles and then to, to powered speakers and amplifiers so uh, a massive range of devices are available and it, if we take a look at this uh, this slide i i made you can see one of the newest dante devices from ordinate is a little bluetooth module so now you can you can go bluetooth from your mobile phone or, or smart device straight to a dante network yep so it, it's amazing what you can integrate um, with a network now. So yeah, very low cost in your pocket solutions. And Dante and uh, through Ordinate, you get a lot of good training. 
And, That's right, uh, yeah. Um, a lot of ex expansion. Yeah, the, on their website, and they have training certificates uh, to, to get for, for audio engineers to, to learn all about networking. And they're, they're good at continuous development and improvements as well. You know, every year there's some new kind of module for Dante or new, new uh, features in their software, Dante controller software. One piece of software to control every Dante device um, is, is awesome. And a Dante domain manager as well to, uh, to manage uh, security and, and so on in, in your network. Um, so, and Dante virtual sound card as well, um, which we're using in our setup today um, for getting audio in and out of your computer. Right. Yeah, so. So, networks. Huge versatility, yeah, yeah. We can start off with simple networks as we see on the screen here, small Dante network. It's yeah, you can build a network without needing a, a switch. Even I could build a network like that. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. So yeah, you can start with, with simple connections just with a few cables between a few devices. Yeah. So I mean, we, we are here to answer the question of why bother with network switches um, if you don't need them, or what's the advantage of having network switches? So uh, let's cover a few reasons why you should uh, be thinking of using network switches. So firstly, the same system, add a switch, um, and now you, you've got a much more resilient system. Previously, if one cable broke, you end up with two networks with no connection between them. Now, if one cable I is cut, you only lose one device from the system, all the other devices keep on working with each other. And um, it improves its speed as well because you're yeah, so a single jump. Yeah, a any, any audio path from one device to another now just goes through two cables rather than possibly five or six cables. So it's a much shorter path for the data to go through. Um, so therefore, uh, it can make, it make a difference. Okay, it, it's only like fractions of a millisecond, but yep. it, it's a difference that can count when, when you are... Uh, when you have live performers using in-ear monitors. Yeah. Uh, but obviously when you're scaling up a system to having hundreds of devices rather than just uh, a few, then it, it does make a bigger difference. But yeah, another great thing you can do with switches is build fully redundant systems. So here we have quite a large mixing system. Use additional switches, one for a primary network and one for a secondary network. And then in this system that we see, if any cable gets broken, you don't lose anything. You lose no audio at all. Even if any switch loses power or gets disconnected, you don't lose any audio for any time at all. So you can build fully redundant systems for those critical live events. Another reason for using a switch is to provide PoE. You know what PoE is, Carl? I do, because I was in the webinar this morning. It's Good lad. power over Ethernet. <laughs> power over Ethernet, yeah. It's like the phantom power of, uh, of networking. So phantom power, you know, microphones, like the ones we're wear wearing, needs to get a voltage from the mixing desk. So it's power and audio through the same cable, where it's the same with the network devices here. Power, control, and audio through one cable. So for those who are not too sure what those objects are on the screen, you've got a couple of um, PoE uh, column speakers yep. or conferencing systems. You've got an uh, announcement or microphone there, and uh, you've also got a small I.O. device, which is running on the Dante network. Yeah, that's right. So Yamaha's new Adesia system, the, the conference system with a ceiling microphone, they, all those devices use PoE. So you only need one type of cable in your whole system, Cat 5E or, or Cat 6 cable that carries everything you need to the devices. A couple more reasons for using a switch. Uh, another one is for combining different types of data together. So if you want to use the same infrastructure of switches and cables, not just for your audio network, but maybe for lighting control, maybe for your normal office computer network, then you can have all these different types of data sharing the same switches and network cables. So it, it's a way to save cost uh, and to reduce complexity, in, particularly in installations. Then 
if you want to go longer distance between devices, yeah, is that an ice cream truck? <laughs> is that an ice cream truck? <laughs> well, I'm sure it will play some nice tunes for you, Carl. <laughs> but I'm not sure how cool it's going to be. Uh. <laughs> it's an OB van. Okay. Was, was, like was, my, was my um, drawing not, not, quite, not quite good enough for you? I see what you mean, though. Yeah, so if you have a long distance between two, two networked audio devices, use switches with fiber optic converters, and then you can have up to 10 kilometers distance between them. So it's a way to get audio a long distance. You couldn't do that with copper. Very good. So they're the main reasons for using network switches. Um, one final thing I'd like to draw everyone's attention to, though, is that of switch design. So. Perhaps uh, some of you have, uh, have used regular IT switches and taken them on tour or taken them on the road and perhaps found them to be a little unreliable or perhaps <laughs> their screws start falling out. That's what's happened to me in the past. Um, so, yeah, many IT switches are designed for IT tasks. So you put them in a rack, you connect all the cables, and you shut the door on it for five years and just keep it running. Um, and that's a perfectly valid way of, of using networks and maybe how a lot of audio installations are done. But once you start needing to create mobile systems or, or rented systems that are on different jobs in different places on different days, then you need something a bit more hardy. Uh, and that's why Yamaha came up with the SWP range of switches which include the rugged connectors, the rugged chassis and rack ears, redundant power connectors on the rear, fanless silent operation. And we'll find out more about these Dante presets that, that make them much faster and easier to configure for your different audio networking jobs. So um, they save you time and they keep working on the road. Great. I think it's, it's worth mentioning that perhaps only now in the last few years, we've started to see the words Yamaha and switches come together in the same phrase mm. um, as the networking necessity has become bigger and bigger. Um, many of you may not know that Yamaha have been making switches domestically in Japan for many years and also amongst the leaders in uh, Japan. So we've got something like 15 years worth of experience of making a variety of um, initially IT style switch, switch switches, as you were describing yeah, earlier. Yeah. And now, as the need for networking on tour and in rental companies has grown, we've incorporated that into the rugged design uh, that we have for our mixing consoles and things yeah, like that. Yeah, that's exactly right, Carl, yeah. It's not new technology for Yamaha. It's stuff Yamaha has been doing <laughs> already for, for, for quite a few years, just adapted to, uh, to the live sound industry, which obviously we've been part of for, for 40 years or so. Yeah, so it's consolidating uh, uh, different skills into, uh, into a, a new range of products. Now you talked about these, those particular switches as having Dante presets. Well, yes. Presets are all well and good, providing you have a, a, a knowledge of how to manage your network and all of the equipment within it, to mm. manage it, to uh, monitor it, and to look after it in case anything should go wrong. And yeah. I think uh, Andy's made a... Um, a video that's coming up now, which will talk about uh, how to use monitoring systems and what to look out for with your network. Is that right? Absolutely. Yeah, that's a key thing. Using a using computer software to uh, keep an eye on what your network is up to, um, particularly with regard to, to bandwidth. So let's watch this. And while while this uh, video is playing, we'll keep an eye on the Q and A. So please type any questions you get. Uh, into the Q&A of Zoom, and uh, we should uh, be able to address your queries in a little bit of time. Perhaps your system is spread around a large sports stadium or a convention center or a college campus. So it would take a long time to physically inspect each device and connection. Not something you'd want to do every day. So, LAN Monitor provides a useful visual inspection of the network, indicating each connection and connected device, and monitoring the bandwidth used by each switch port. It works with a full range of Yamaha SWR and SWP switches, 
and it runs on Mac OS X and Windows 10, 8.1 or 7. Connect a computer, just one at a time, to any switch port that belongs to the default VLAN, or any port if no VLANs have been created. And the devices will be automatically detected. No IP addresses need to be made at this point. It uses a proprietary discovery protocol called L2MS, Layer 2 Management Service. All the Dante devices will be detected using the same discovery method as Dante controller software, which can be launched directly from LAN monitor, by the way, using the icon in the top menu bar. By selecting a Dante device in the left tree view, LAN Monitor offers a concise view of its status, including number of transmit and receive flows, bandwidth usage, sample rate, operating latency, and its redundancy setting. It's often easier to monitor here than scrolling through several different pages in Dante Controller. Select a switch in the left tree view, and the connected devices will be shown. Customize your own labels and names for the switches and for the other devices. Check the IP and MAC addresses of each device. In the area above, the status of each switch port is shown, and the color coding indicates connection speed. Blue means 10 gigabits per second, used for inter-switch links. Green means 1 gig, used by most Dante devices and computers. And orange means 100 megabits per second, used by smaller Dante devices, including PoE models and some control interfaces. Press the Bandwidth tab to see how the switch ports are performing as a percentage of their total. As you reach 80% or more, these will turn yellow as a warning, then orange at 90% and red at 100%. Above 80% is risky, and you should take action to reduce the amount of data passing through the port, or upgrade the device to allow greater bandwidth, like use a switch with 10 gig ports. In the next video, I'll give you tips about reducing the bandwidth used by Dante in a network. So look out for that. But as a rough guide, you could consider that each transmitted channel would use about 2 megabits per second if it is 48 kilohertz, 24 bit. So that would limit you to around 400 channels safely within a 1 gig link. Obviously, double the data rate for 96 kilohertz, so half the channel count to 200 within a 1 gig link. With a switch that provides PoE, such as the SWR2311P10G, you get an extra tab to show the PoE status of each port. At the top of the LAN monitor window, you find a snapshots icon Press this to save the connection status of all the devices. Then, whenever something disconnects, you get a red notification. And when a new device is connected, you get a blue colored notification. So you'll always know when something has changed. Certain switches, including the SWR2310 series and the SWP2, will allow a whole network map to be viewed and printed when LAN monitor is connected to it. This is a useful list of all the devices connected to each switch port with their names and IP addresses and their connection speed. Now let's highlight a switch and open the web GUI, the graphical user interface. This is how to access many more switch features via a web browser. And you don't need to type any IP address. <laughs> the software does it for you. By default, the username and password are both blank. Just click Login. Though, 
the SWP1, being a different generation of switch, does have a username of administrator. Once you're online, you can see a dashboard for the switch with some useful analytics about its performance. You can access detailed settings such as link aggregation, VLANs, and IGMP snooping. I'll tell you more about how to use them in Dante Networks during the next few videos. And the Management tab allows you to save all the switch settings, restrict certain users and devices, and update the firmware. It's a good idea to do that because new firmware has recently added some nice new features including radius server settings to help manage the network security. I'll also tell you about that in a later video. So let me show you how to update the firmware first. Download the relevant file from Yamaha.com, go to the Pro Audio product pages, find the device and their downloads. Then save the firmware file on your computer. In the web GUI, open the Update Firmware menu and press Next. In the Update Firmware from PC section, browse for the file you just downloaded and press Confirm. Then press OK to start the update. The switch will restart to complete the process. Config management means that the settings of one switch can be copied to another. So if you have multiple switches to prepare, you only need to do it once, then quickly copy it to each of the others. In many cases, exporting the running config as a text file is the method to use. If you like, you can open it and view the settings. Next, in the Access Management menu, you can create a password for the administrator and create new user names and access rights for other colleagues. In case you want to allow some people to view the dashboard and logs but not change any config settings, for example. While LAN Monitor can only be run from one computer at a time on the network, the web GUI can be accessed from multiple computers. If you prefer to monitor the whole network through a web browser rather than LAN monitor, then you can force one SWR2310 or 2311P switch to become a L2MS master. If you choose to do that, LAN monitor will stop functioning. Rather, the switch itself becomes the gateway to monitoring all the other compatible Yamaha switches in the system. You log into the master switch and from that you can monitor and program VLAN settings for the whole network. But note that you need the IP address of the switch to use the web GUI. So give the switch a suitable static IP address first. And don't forget it. Otherwise you'll have to reset the switch back to its defaults to regain control. However, it does give you more flexible access to the network monitoring facilities, so there are advantages. Thank you to Andy and Tim for making that video. Things have come a long way since I used EtherSound and an SB168 stage box, <laughs> haven't they, Just Yeah, and my hair has grown too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my, my lockdown goatee beard has also grown. Um, We've only had one question so far from Jupiter, so please keep the questions firing in. We know you're out there watching. We know that Joe in the US is there and Mateus in Brazil. So uh, hello to you guys. Um, so yep, keep those questions coming. Yeah. Whilst before we go any further forward, let's answer Jupiter's question, which is, mm. how would you, would you compare Dante favorably with Maddie? Yeah, well, I could talk for hours about that really, I suppose, you know, how much more advanced Dante is. Um, so Maddie is a is a point to point system which can carry up to sixty four channels um, of audio through one cable, 
if you want to come back the other way, you need a second cable. So it's sing single direction, 64 channels, one device to one device. Well, Dante, I mean, let's imagine Dante is like hundreds of MADI connections and a MADI router in the middle as well. Um, because Dante allows you to connect hundreds, thousands of devices all together and uh, with network switches, and you have computer software to choose which audio channel goes where and where. So some devices, some Dante devices, will, will transmit just one or two channels. Some will receive just one or two channels, like a stereo amplifier. But some will transmit and receive hundreds of channels. So one large mixing console could handle 144 channels in and out at the same time at 96 kilohertz. Uh, to take an example from Yamaha's Rivage PM consoles. So Dante is so much more scalable, so much more powerful when you combine more and more Dante devices together in a network. And the cables are bi-directional. You get all those channels in and out through one so I'm guessing you're, you seem cable. to be a fan of, of, of the network. I'm a huge fan, yeah. <laughs> <Excellent>. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, looking back at the video, you just uh, talk, uh, talking about LAN monitor software there. Yeah, um, yeah. I'm assuming it's free and downloadable from? Of course, yeah. Yamaha's website. So the, the, the pro audio pages of Yamaha.com, uh, you can find the download section and you'll find LAN monitor available for Windows and Mac computers, yeah, free of charge. Um, and it's got all of the Dante device information there as well. Um, mm. Does it just show Yamaha Dante devices? Yeah, that, that's a good question, Carl. So LAN monitor will only work with Yamaha switches, so the SWP and the SWR range of switches. So you need at least one Yamaha switch in your system to, to make use of LAN monitor. But it will detect all Dante devices, not just Yamaha ones, but Dante devices from other manufacturers as well, it will, uh, will detect and it will show those uh, status informations like, um, like sample rate, uh, bit depth latency, uh, and uh, uh, multicast and unicast uh, bandwidth. Yeah. Unicorn what? <laughs> Unicorn. Unicorn bandwidth. Unicast bandwidth. Got okay, it. unicast, let's say, is like MADI, uh, transmitting from one channel to no, transmitting from one device to one receiver. Uh, on the other hand, you can do multicast, which is transmitting from one device to multiple receivers. One good question we had this morning, you mm. mentioned updating or up using the LAN monitor to update your switches. Yeah, okay, yeah. The question this morning came in, which was when we did an earlier uh, version of the um, mm. webinar, which was uh, how important is that to have your firmware regularly mm. checked uh, and updated yeah, on your yeah. switches? So uh, it's just as important for network switches to check your, your firmware as it is for other digital audio devices. So uh, ho hopefully you're all familiar now with you know, when you build a new digital audio system, you're going to check the firmware of every device to check they're all up to date and compatible because it could give you some nice new features or it would fix some, some uh, bugs. And it's the same with network switches. Okay, so they look so simple with just a few connectors, but no buttons, no switches, no knobs or faders. But actually inside, they're probably more complicated than your regular digital mixer. They have so many hidden features. So you really do need to check the firmware and uh, make a habit of uh, updating um, to get new features and, uh, and to get them working more reliably. Great. Question from me is, you mentioned in the previous video VLANs, uh -huh. but you haven't explained what they are yet. VLANs, yeah. I have prepared another video, which we'll play in a, in a few minutes' time. Okay, to, but in uh, the meantime, VLANs. apart from VLANs, there's all sorts of other strange acronyms, such as EEE -E -E and IGMP, uh, QOS, IKEA. I'm not sure about that one. Well, I, <laughs> um, I think the next video is going to dig a little deeper into those and explain what they're all about. Yeah, let's demystify a few acronyms. Great. <laughs> Hopefully you know that basic Dante systems don't require any special settings in a network switch. Unmanaged switches without energy efficient Ethernet can be used. But when your network grows and additional equipment is added, there are benefits to using managed switches. 
and making some particular settings. It may take time to learn about this for regular IT manufacturers of switches, but Yamaha makes it refreshingly easy. Back to EEE, or Energy Efficient Ethernet. It can be a useful switch feature for saving energy where it slows down data transmission at certain times. But this is not good for real-time audio, so it's recommended to disable it for Dante devices. Then there's QoS, or quality of service. This switch feature identifies 64 different tags that a network device may add to its transmitted data. Then each data type is organized into a queue and assigned a priority level. The higher the priority, the sooner the data is processed and forwarded. Many switches have four priority levels, while the Yamaha's managed switches have eight. Anyway, Dante clock signals require the highest priority, and Dante audio the second highest. Then, there's IGMP snooping and querier. IGMP meaning Internet Group Management Protocol. This strange sounding feature is where switches spy on the data passing through them. They identify and then block multicast data from reaching places where they are not needed. Otherwise, multicast data would spread throughout the network using up precious bandwidth. Normally, there's very little multicast data in Dante systems, but sometimes it is needed when the same audio signals need to reach many devices, like the output of a mixer reaching all the amplifiers surrounding a sports stadium. So IGMP snooping is a helpful switch feature. Note that three versions of IGMP exist, while Dante is compatible with versions 2 and 3 only. And make sure the same version is used throughout the network for stable operation. It's notoriously tricky to program in most IT switches, but Yamaha makes it easy and uses the newer version 3 by default. Compare an unmanaged switch with a managed one using IGMP snooping and querier. When there were 48 audio channels being transmitted multicast in the network, 100 megabit devices are overwhelmed and struggle to work correctly. However, IGMP snooping filters out the multicast transmissions from places where they are not needed, and your lower bandwidth devices can work freely again. Actually, the ideal settings for IGMP, QoS, and EEE are all enabled by default in the SWP range of switches for VLAN 1, the default VLAN. To enable them on SWR series managed switches, use the Dante optimization feature found in the web GUI management menu. Go to Manual Settings, click Next, and then OK. It's as simple as that. Compare the Settings menu for other types of switch, where you see a table of 64 numbers to contend with, as well as a range of other baffling options. Now you can see how these switches are helpfully optimized. Thank you again for that, Andy. There's a lot of information to take on board in those videos, and yeah. I think it's worth reminding everybody that these webinars that we do will be archived on our YouTube site. So if you want to go back and go through them again or share them or, or tell somebody about them, we will be able to uh, put this video up onto YouTube probably in the next few days, I think. Indeed. So um, another question's come in from someone which I think is a good time to answer. It's right. from Matthias. And he's saying, for live streaming, many engineers ask me, is it possible to merge Dante and internet connections at the on the same network, 
And what are the drawbacks of this system? It would be nice to discuss. Mm. Well, now we've learned about IGMP snooping, maybe you can realise there are no drawbacks to, to having internet connection and Dante in the same network. In our, in our office, in the Yamaha R&D Centre, we do that all the time. It's just a natural thing for us to do. We do it continuously. Dante systems, you know, even hundreds of channels on the same network as, as we use for our internet connection. Um, no trouble at all, so long as you've got those functions like IGMP snooping running <laughs> to stop multicast data from going to places where it's not wanted, because you don't want to be multicasting out to the internet all the time, <laughs> do you? Because <laughs> then you won't be able to access, uh, well, you won't be able to watch us on Zoom. Uh, <laughs> So, yeah, I learned my lesson the hard way. So Yes, you have a story about that, don't you? <laughs> way back, 10 years or more ago, when, when, uh, when we were first playing with um, the Dante uh, MY cards that we could fit in, in our mixing desks, um, I, I took a couple of them over to, to our office in Germany for training, and I remember connecting them, and I thought, well, I think we had the same question. What happens if you put it on the office network? So. I just said, oh, let, let's try. I'm sure it's fine. I did it in my own office. What could go wrong? <laughs> let's try, yeah. Yeah, um, and I think I, I had not heard, not did not know what IDMP snooping was at that time, I think. So uh, I connected them up to the network, and um, I think it's the only time I've ever seen an IT engineer actually run. <laughs> they, they came to us so quickly. What's happened? What's happened? Our, our network stopped working, and, and they had snooped it and seen that there's loads of loads of data tagged with ordinate or something on on it they didn't know what it was but they knew it was coming from this room so uh yeah so yeah that that's us why what what what's the problem and they said oh it's 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 invaded our network it's gone going everywhere so um they weren't using igmp snooping and at that time i think most computers were working with 100 megabit connections and we we had these uh, gigabit Dante devices, so we were we were flooding multicast traffic all over the network and made the whole the whole <laughs> office um, grind to a halt. It's a good thing that you learned that the hard way. Uh, like yeah, able to teach others not to do it. Indeed, indeed. So IGMP snooping will save your day. Yes, it's a crazy sounding thing. Maybe it sounds like some Bond villains or you're obsessed something. <laughs> I just like making a link between villains and VLANs. Talking of VLANs, <laughs> will you finally now explain to us what and how we can use VLANs? If you let me tell a joke. Oh, go on then. <laughs> as long as it's funny. I haven't got any funny jokes. You know that. <laughs> no. So uh, how does a network engineer sound check a microphone? He goes, uh, one, zero, one, zero, uh, one, one, zero, zero. Thank you. Yeah, it's all digital. Shall we watch that video? I think we ought to. If you've been studying networks or completed some Dante certification training, you must have come across them already. Virtual local area networks. It's where the switches can be split into zones so different devices can be completely separated from communicating with each other. It means networks can be shared by several groups of devices without them interfering with each other, so long as the total available bandwidth isn't exceeded. So you could use one VLAN for Dante devices and another VLAN for the control of lighting equipment or video or general office IT. Each port on a switch gets assigned to a particular VLAN and ports that are used to link with other switches can be programmed to carry multiple VLANs at the same time without the data crossing over to the wrong device group. The SWP switches make this really easy. Dante presets A, B and C all have two VLANs where half the ports are used for Dante in VLAN 1 while the other half are in VLAN 2 which can be used for other equipment. Perhaps wireless microphone monitoring, for example, or for controlling amplifier systems. Dante preset C makes both VLANs ready for Dante. So two separate Dante networks can be used within 
the same switches. Perhaps one for bringing inputs from the performance area to the mixing console, and a separate network to distribute the mixer outputs to the PA system amplifiers. Keeping them separate allows different engineers to manage and monitor them individually to minimize mistakes and to limit the effect of any fault. So it's useful having HY or MY cards for Dante, allowing mixing consoles and DSP engines to link between two or more Dante networks. On the SWR2300 switches and the SWP2 switches, there are two ways to manage VLANs. The traditional way, using tagged VLANs, which is compatible with switches from other manufacturers, or a newer, simpler method called multiple VLAN, which will suit some networks. The tagged method is used in the Dante presets for SWP switches. So let's have a look at that first. In user config mode, the WebGUI can be used to create VLANs and assign them to certain ports. Open the detailed settings menu and the VLAN menu. Then select create VLAN. You'll see there's only one VLAN in the default state of the switch. Click the new icon to create another. Give it a number and a name, such as amps, if you're going to use it to link managed amplifiers which are not equipped with Dante, for example. Then you could create a third VLAN with another name and more, as many as you need. After that, you need to assign different ports to each VLAN. Go to the Tag VLAN page, and you'll see that by default, each port is assigned to VLAN 1, and the operation mode is set to Access. This means the ports will be used to introduce new data into the network, such as from Dante devices or computers. All the data entering the switch via an Access port will join the associated VLAN, in this case, VLAN 1. Now we can assign other ports to VLAN 2 and 3 to separate their data. Check the required ports for VLAN 2, then click Specify All. Keep the operation mode as access and set the VLAN to number 2, Amps. Confirm. Assign other ports to VLAN 3, if you wish. Now the switch is separated into three segments, and any device in VLAN 1 will not be able to communicate with devices in VLAN 2 or 3. It is as if we have three individual network switches now. If we want data from all three VLANs to reach other switches, we will now need three cables. Or if we want to use just one cable, we'll need to create a trunk. I'll describe how to do that in the next video. But now let's briefly see the alternative method of multiple VLANs. So let's select all the ports and return to defaults. And now everything is back in VLAN 1. So open the multiple VLAN page. And here we can create groups of ports that we want to work together. For example, use ports 1 to 6 for Dante, 7 to 12 for amps, and 13 to 18 for office equipment. So select ports 1 to 6 and specify all. Select group 1 and confirm. You can assign ports to multiple groups easily if you want one computer to monitor all the devices, for example. This allows all the devices to use the same subnet or range of IP addresses while keeping their communication data separate. So this method is quicker to implement and perhaps easier to understand, but it can only be used with these newer Yamaha SWR and SWP2 managed switches. It's not available with the SWP1. 
So, using VLANs can save the cost of purchasing additional switches to handle extra data. A switch with many ports divided into VLANs will be more efficient than using many small individual switches. The SWP switches have a really helpful front panel feature for VLANs. It displays the VLAN settings with the port LEDs using color coding. For example, no lights will indicate VLAN 1. A green light will indicate the second VLAN. An orange light will indicate the third VLAN. And two orange lights will indicate a trunk carrying two or more VLANs together. Great. So you mentioned in that video that you would have a following video that talked about things like trunks. But actually, that following video won't be in this webinar. No. It will be in the next webinar. So if I can just go to the PowerPoint slide for a Correct. second, we can see that the next webinar in this series will take place next Wednesday. Mm. We're doing it at two time zones like we did uh, today. And that will, you say, will cover stuff, simple stuff that makes you look clever. Hopefully, yeah. Well, even me. Absolutely, you yeah. can't. Absolutely. I'll tell you, I, like I said, I had you in mind as my, <laughs> as my target audience <laughs> for this training material. I'm yeah. not sure how I to mean, that. Yeah, it, it might not make you look clever compared to certified, qualified IT engineers, but uh, it will make you look clever to, uh, to um, regular audio engineers, let's say, or, or to you. <laughs> To your family, no, they, might, they just might think you've gone mad. But right. <laughs> I'll, I'll do my best to try and learn more. We've had a couple more questions. Thank you for <coughs> firing them in. So now's a good time to answer those, I think. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me see. Otherwise, I'll tell another joke. Please don't. Um, <laughs> can I use a device that needs PoE, like the speakers, without a PoE switch? So if, it, if a mm, device needs right. PoE, do I have to have a PoE switch like that one there? Yeah, good Good question. Yeah, that's that's one of the that's the kind of switch we use with the uh, Adesia systems for um, for conferencing. Yeah, so there are there is another way to get PoE into a uh, uh, network device, and that that's that using something called a PoE injector, which is basically uh, a, a, a little power supply with a network through kind of cable in in and out. So you have network in and power in and then PoE with network out. Uh, so you can use that with uh, a lot of devices, though it does add an extra an extra point of possible failure, let's say, because you've got an extra cable and extra connection uh, in your system. So we would always recommend to use a PoE switch rather than a PoE injector for, uh, for extra reliability. But there is a way to do it. Cool. Yeah. Next question, what will happen if I use a network switch without quality of service settings? Right. In most cases, it'll be no problem. So QoS will only really activate once you get up to 80% of the bandwidth uh, through your, your switch ports, basically. So in most cases, you aren't going to reach that, perhaps unless you're using... 100 megabit uh, devices um, alongside gigabit devices, you might reach that threshold in, in, um, in 100 megabit links. But mostly, most devices are going to be gigabit um, or more, uh, and then you're, you're rarely going to reach uh, that, the amount of bandwidth that, that requires QoS. So really, it's much more important to have IGMP snooping enabled and activated on, on your switches because they are going to have a much bigger effect on your bandwidth management than QoS. So don't get too hung up about, about QoS. IGMP snooping is really the, the, the key uh, thing to grasp and understand. Cool. And last question we hear from Tom. When is it best to use multiple VLANs instead of tagged VLANs? Right, yeah. So, as a reminder, tagged VLANs are what we use in the SWP switch presets that we can uh, see on, um, down here and uh, just over here. So, tagged VLANs are the ones we 
use mostly because they work well when you have a lot of switches um, combined together in a system. So tagged VLANs allow you to transmit um, data from lots of different VLANs from one switch to other switches around. Uh, the multiple VLAN uh, option of VLANs is really only relevant when you have just one switch in your system, maybe with a lot of, a lot of ports, but just one switch and maybe just one subnet. Um, that is one class of, of uh, IP address, but you, wa you still want to separate the data a bit. So it, it's a much easier way of managing a small network with just one switch. Great. So really for the for let's say for AV systems or audio systems, we're mostly going to be using the tagged VLANs. Brilliant. So let's take this opportunity now to remind ourselves where we can uh, get some more information and follow up. Um, of course, on our website, we have all of the download section with the manuals and some self-training sections. Um, and we will be using the social media areas such as Facebook and LinkedIn and Instagram, etc., where we promote all of this and the webinars and the different things that are going on. And hopefully, we'll soon be able to do much more face-to-face -face things, touch wood, in the near future. We can't wait to get out and meet everybody again. And, of course, a reminder that this and all of the other training um, videos and webinars that we're doing, a whole host of them up on our Yamaha Global YouTube site. So feel free to uh, pour yourself a cup of coffee when you're bored and uh, go and learn a bit more. Yeah, take a look and check out all the playlists because we've got a, a whole range of playlists for pro audio related uh, content like a playlist for all our webinars, a playlist for, for the new networked switch videos that we've seen a few clips of uh, today, um, playlists for the teacher's tips videos and all sorts. Yeah. Excellent. Well, it just leads me to thank Andy for all the hard work with Tim and Ascot and putting these uh, videos and the training together. And most of all, I want to thank you guys for taking the time to listen to us and we really appreciate it. And from me, stay safe. Enjoy the rest of your day, and that's goodbye from me. Yeah, and take care, everybody, and we look forward to seeing you again, same place, same time, next week. Okay. Bye for now.